millions of Americans out of work, we decided to start something that we call Find Me a Job. Now, one of our viewers wrote in. Her name is Megan Abner. Let's meet her. My name is Megan Abner, and I'm a job seeker. A few years ago, I went through a divorce, and I decided to go back to college and finish my degree. I went to Northeastern University here in Chicago, and I got my degree in English Literature and Interdisciplinary Studies. I would like to work for a nonprofit um, with something in urban school reform or after school programs uh, with underserved communities with children and their families. I've been unemployed since May 2011. That's when I graduated and I had a part-time job last year but it was a short contract job. I have $90,000 in student loans. Some days I regret my decision to go back to school because it just incurred more debt and I'm not making any income towards that debt. I have a 10-year-old named Nicholas and a 9-year-old named Declan. Me being unemployed has affected them obviously financially because I'm always saying no to things that they need and that they want. Activities, things for school, supplies, clothes. Um, but also there's sort of an anxiety that I think um, in the house because they're never sure, you know, when is mom going to get a job and when are we going to be more financially stable. It's difficult when we're doing homework each night to say, you know, you have to do your homework and make good grades if you want to go to college and get a good job. When they see that mom stayed up late at night studying and making good grades and it didn't pay off because now it's been a year and a half later and mom's still looking for a job, still having trouble making ends meet. I took about 10 years off um, to raise my kids and I think it's, it's had an effect on my ability to find a job. I think when, when em prospective employers see my resume, they see that gap, they immediately dismiss it um, you know, for the lack of experience. Making ends meet is difficult. Uh, I get some child support. Uh, we've gotten help from the government, which not thrilled about, but um, my mom and dad are still helping me and again at 40 years old I would rather be helping them as they get older. They're still helping me pay all my utility bills and friends and my landlord, everyone's really been helping out. My dream job would be something in urban school reform, uh, working in an underserved community um, with at-risk kids. And I welcome Megan to the show everybody. You're in a tough spot. You have a tough story, $90,000 in loan debt. Uh, you're you're in, the, in a bunch with hundreds of thousands of Americans that are in that kind of debt. Of course, many of them students coming right out of school. Your situation is quite different. Right. And, and I imagine when you got divorced and you went back to school, you probably thought it was going to work out much differently. Honestly, I thought I would graduate and get a job like in a month or two. I honestly did. Yeah, it's just it's a tough job market as we all yeah. know. But for employers that are watching right now and, and that want to help, what do you think your greatest attributes are? I have a very strong work ethic and I'm very positive, um, always happy person, um, get along great with people. I'm a great communicator, I'm a great writer. Yeah, well you're also driven and you want to give back to the community because you talked about you want to help others. Yes. I do, um, although I'm starting to think that maybe I need to look into jobs that aren't in the nonprofit sector right? and maybe kind of do that for volunteer work. Right. Well, we're certainly not experts on, on finding jobs, but we have brought one in. We decided to call someone who is an expert. Welcome the CEO of Mile Walk, a Chicago-based executive search firm, and the author of Interview Intervention, Andy La Savita. Thank you. Now, Andy, you've already been working with Megan. You've already met we have. We, we spent a couple of hours late last week. Um, we got together after we found out we were going to be on the show and we talked about what it was that she was doing. And I think she was doing a lot of things right, um, certainly focusing a lot of energy, uh, searching online, looking at some of the tools, which is something that somebody in her demographic should do. But what, what I noticed, and, and even to specifically to Megan, but also for, for, for the broader audience, is that people need to understand that your demographic has an awful lot to do with uh, how you likely will find your job, which, which means would be best for you to focus your time 
time on. So we took a look at her demographic, things like age, uh, your profession, your income level will all influence where you really should be spending your time. So we, we decided we would, we would supplement some of the things that she was doing with some other things that would be, would be very helpful. So if you, if you think in terms of demographics, a couple simple ones that you can look at. Um, if you're under 50 years old, for example, at, or you earn less than 100000 the likelihood that you will find a job through somebody you know, networking, we all hear about how networking is really great to, to do, sure. you have a 27% chance of actually finding a job through that, through that means, which sounds great, and it is. But if you're over 50, or you make more than $100,000, the likelihood that you'll find your job through somebody that you know is 46%. Mm. So it would stand to reason that somebody in the first category probably ought to be spending about 25% time simply networking, while somebody in the latter category ought to probably spend twice that much. Right. So taking a look at Megan, who falls in that first category, we wanted to supplement some of the online resources that she was using with augmenting her ability to network. And, and so we, we, we talked about some of that. Right. Now you have your book, Interview Intervention. You talk about nailing that interview. What are the tips for people out there that are in Megan's situation? Well, I think, I think some of the tips to, is to start to get to the interview first. I think you want to make sure that you're networking. I think you want to make sure that you are building your online presence so that you understand uh, what's out there, published opportunities that are out there. You want to be visible to employers. I think you also want to make sure that you're targeting the organizations that uh, you're interested in and, and target, targeting those published opportunities that you're qualified for. And I, I stress that word qualified for. Mm -hmm. You also want to supplement it with volunteering and some of the other things she talked about, not-for-profit, great opportunities to be able to do that. Right. So, Megan, for you, was there anything eye-opening when you met with Andy? Was there anything that you said, you know what, I haven't tried that or I haven't thought of that? Oh my gosh, so many things that I feel like I've been misdirecting my time. And uh, we talked a lot about LinkedIn, which I've been working on the past few days. So, yeah, and then a big part of it, I think, is interview strategies. Right. What, so, now, you mentioned LinkedIn, and, and I'm not on LinkedIn, but uh, do, you, do you believe in LinkedIn? Do you think this really helps people? I do. Uh, we look at the statistics. Uh, my company, we gather lots of them from people that we talk to with thousands of data points each year. Uh, one in four employers hires from people that they know, employee referrals. But 80% of the employers are looking at LinkedIn, looking at profiles. You have an 8% chance of finding your job through just simply having a LinkedIn profile. Um, these are statistics we've seen in, in years, and it's especially becoming more and more, uh, more and more important. I think the most important thing about LinkedIn is it shows you where your friends are working. Right. Uh, so you, if you find opportunities that you, that you enjoy, you might know somebody who works there. Yeah. That's one of the biggest, the biggest helps. Now, a lot of times when we have people on that have a book, they want to sell the book, but you actually give your book away to anybody who wants it. Anybody who wants it. How does it, that work? It, it, was, it was my uh, effort to try to help restore balance to the employment market. Um, they, can, they can check it out on the Milewalk website. They can send us an email at info at milewalk.com. Um, we send a complimentary ebook to anybody who wants it. We're, we're giving uh, everybody in the studio audience one for free today. Yep, you're all going home with it. Away with one. So, let me ask you one more question, Annie. Do you think that the job market is getting better? We see the unemployment rate seems to be dropping, but do you, do you see it every day that it's getting better? I do, I do see it every day. Um, it, it's certainly in the sectors that we support, some of the higher-end sectors, uh, the, the employment rate is dropping. One of the most systemic issues that we're seeing is with recent college graduates. If you're under 25 years old uh, and you have a, a college degree, um, there's about 3 million or so people in that category. And Megan is included even though she's 40, <laughs> uh, even though she's 40. But, uh, you know, that's where we see some of the biggest issues is that there's a, a little over half of them are either unemployed or underemployed. Right. So, so that's, that's an issue. Yeah. That's a real issue. Well, Andy, we appreciate you stopping thank by. You. And Megan, best thank of luck you. to you. And thank you for sharing your story. Okay. All right. And if you're looking for work and you need our help, email us at wcl at windycitylive.com and write find me a job in the subject line.